Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We can help you change your life today. We can help you change the lives of loved ones, family members, workmates, friends today. We can get you on a good nutritional supplement program. We can help you wean yourself off your prescription drugs. Give us a shout. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website. Also, criticalhealthnews.com. Also, PharmacistBen.com, which we blog on regularly with uh, blog posts as well as news stories, CriticalHealthNews.com and PharmacistBen.com. You can also go to BenFuchsArchives.com. You can order products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to start yourself a little business, make some residual money, make some spare change, spare cash, or make a living. Some folks are making a pretty significant living selling longevity products, which really sell themselves. All you have to do is show people the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Healthy Start Pack, the Ultimate EFAs, the Ultimate Enzymes. Most people notice results pretty darn quickly, especially from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which I'm sipping on as we speak. I call it rocket fuel because that's what it really is, folks, especially if you're deficient in nutrients. One of the great gifts of the human body is the more deficient we are in nutrition, the faster our body absorbs the nutrients, which is why most people get really quick results from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It costs around 50 bucks for a one month supply and it is well, well worth it. You can find out all about it off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 and they can tell you all about it. Okay, so we are talking the ketogenic diet, fats, fatty vitamins, fatty hormones, all as it regards the skin. That's where we started off this this journey a couple weeks ago. Last we spoke, we were talking about how the as the food chain moves up, as as we go up the food chain, rocks turn into vegetables, which then are, turn into animal foods, and vibrations become more dense and vibrations become higher. A rock has a lower vibration than a vegetable, which has a lower vibration than a than an animal food. You can tell that a substance has a lot of energy by how fast it rots, by how fast it degrades when it's separated from its, from its source of energy. When a vegetable is removed from the ground, it begins the decay process, and that usually takes days or weeks. When a piece of meat is separated from the life force of the animal, when the meat is slaughtered, the decay process begins instantly. That's because meat is so high energy. That's why slaughterhouses have to be regulated so carefully. That's why E. coli and other bacteria are such a problem in the meatpacking business. Dairy is likewise a problem. Eggs are a little, a little bit different because nature's provided them with their own protective case. But even still, if the life inside an egg is not contained by cold in the refrigerator, for example, an egg is going to begin to decay within days of being separated from, from the hen. The bottom line here is animal foods are higher energy than vegetable foods, but like all high energy substances, they break down quickly. They rot. And this is where animal foods get such a a bad rap. They're rotting quickly. 
And many of us are subsisting on foods that have begun, on animal foods that have already begun to break down, to rot. At least, if not subsisting, at least we're eating them. So animal products, theoretically anyway, are the most nutritionally valuable of all foods, and vegetarians are going to unfortunately be missing out on a lot of good nutrition by avoiding them. Also, by the way, as an aside, as my friend Eileen pointed out, hello Eileen if you're listening, there are no toxic animal foods. But there's lots of toxic plants and lots of toxic vegetables. How interesting is that? None of this, by the way, is meant to diminish the importance of veggies, which, as I've said over and over and over and over again, veggies should make up most of what we eat. It's just that human beings are not vegetarians. We're not carnivores either. Human beings are meant to eat everything. We're not rabbits and we're not lions. We're omnivores. The human body is designed to thrive on all kinds of foods, and from a biological standpoint anyway, our bodies are meant to thrive on meat and fish and dairy and veggies and fruit, and that's what it means to be an omnivore. We're opportunistic eaters. We eat what's there. Sorry, vegetarians. We're not supposed to be vegetarians. We're not supposed to be anything terrian if it means that it's, we're only eating one type of food. That's not the way the body works. We're supposed to eat everything. And if you're eating only vegetarian, only vegetable foods, you're missing out on a lot of good nutrition. Not beating up on any vegetarians here. I'm just speaking science. What we're, ne- we're definitely not supposed to be eating is the processed, boxed frankenfood that over the last 200 years or so has taken over our food supply. Today, the 70% of the standard American diet is made up of, of processed foods, and that's most certainly what not, we're not supposed to be eating. Most of the foods that we eat today didn't exist 200 years ago, let alone 500,000 years ago as our bodies were developing on the African savanna. For most of us, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine not at least having some of our foods coming from boxes or cans or being reconstituted or synthesized or somehow fabricated, basically composite food products. The classic example, by the way, of a composite food product is American cheese, which pretty much says it all when we're talking about the standard American diet. If you look at the, on the label, on the, on the uh, package label of a, a little package of American cheese, you're going to see it's not even cheese. It's a processed cheese food product, whatever that means. A pasteurized processed cheese food product, as a matter of fact. American cheese is a patented version of an ordinarily good food. If you're patenting a food, that tells you something right there. And American cheese was was patented by a guy named Kraft, James L. Kraft, at the beginning of the 20th century. And it's a, it's a fake version of an ordinarily good food. Cheese is a highly nutritious, nutritious food. It's protein dense. It's got vitamin K in it. It's got MCTs in it. It's a great ketogenic food. Cheese is an amazing food, but James Kraft saw a business when he saw cheese. He figured he could, when he saw American cheese, American cheese is actually invented by the Swiss. And James Kraft saw it and he quickly patented it because he, could, he, he was a visionary, a, a cheese visionary, a food visionary. And he saw that he could market it as a a modern, high-tech version of an ancient food. Americans were obsessed with modernity at the turn of the 20th century. If something was modern, if something was high-tech, it was good. So James Kraft marketed his cheese product as a modern version of cheese. And American cheese was more stable. It sat on the shelf longer. It was easier to slice. It was easier to melt. But most importantly, it was cheap. It was cheap to sell, and it was cheap to buy. But it's not cheese. Cheese is just milk, uh, milk protein and bacteria. You're not going to see an ingredient deck on cheese, but you're going to see a long ingredient deck on American cheese. And that ingredient deck will include some very non-cheese-like substances, including emulsifiers and preservatives and food coloring and stabilizers, and sorbic acid and calcium phosphate and so- sodium citrate. In fact, over 50% of a slice of American cheese is not cheese. That's why it's called a processed cheese food product, a pasteurized processed cheese food product. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. 
back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We are on the air five days a week, Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. And if you want to check our archive page out, we got five years of archives with great health information at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order longevity products right off the websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, waxes, fillers, oils, water, anything that your skin doesn't need or doesn't use. You shouldn't have to pay for ingredients that your skin doesn't need or doesn't use. You certainly shouldn't have to pay for ingredients that your skin has to detoxify. How egregious is that? Why should we have to pay for preservatives and fragrances? Why should we have to pay for ingredients so a, a company can sell us a product? Anyway, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our 5% retinol gel made with 5% retinol and lots of vitamin C. Okay, now, I don't mean to rip on American cheese, by the way. I know I just did, but there's a lot worse things that we can eat than American cheese. It's just that cheese is one of the all-time great power foods, has so many health benefits, vitamins and protein and good fats, great ketogenic food. And American cheese is kind of like an icon for the adulteration and bastardization of quality foods. Same is true about the bread that we put the cheese on. Bread is just flour and salt and yeast and water. That's it. But if you buy a loaf of bread at a store, a loaf of white bread, you're going to see, or any bread really, you're going to see dozens of ingredients that somehow are supposed to make the bread taste better. In reality, it's not that the ingredients make the bread taste better. It's that we're hypnotized to believe that the bread tastes better. We become conditioned to a certain texture. And so now we consider the softness and the mushiness of the bread to be a standard, a taste standard. The ingredients in your typical loaf of store-bought white bread are, for the most part, in there just so the bread will be able to stay on the shelf, just so somebody can sell you the bread. And this is really what processed foods are about. They're easier to sell. They're easier to make a profit on. And in this way, it's a lot like the skincare business. I came up with the truth treatment products because I've been in the business for so long and I've been formulating products for so long. It never made sense to me that most of the products I were making were just in there so somebody could sell you the product. This is how, uh, this is how foods are. That's how processed foods are. Most of the ingredients in the processed food are there so somebody can sell you the product. Skincare, like processed food, typically, your typical skincare product contains very little that is going to make your body or your skin healthier. Processed food isn't going to make your body healthier. They're, most of the ingredients are just there to sell you something. On the other hand, skincare products do contain ingredients that are going to trick you into thinking that you're doing something for your skin. You rub it on your skin. You go, oh, I feel nice. That feels nice and soft and smooth. All you're feeling is product. You're not feeling anything that happened to your skin. You're feeling silicon and oil and wax, and it might feel good, but it's not doing anything for you. Likewise with processed foods. You got flavors, you got calories, you got aromas. All that's going to trick you into feeling good and feeling satisfied, but it's not going to make you healthier for the most part. The great irony here, folks, is that we don't need processed food. Even though 70% of our calories are coming from processed food, we could do quite well with veggies, a little egg and dairy, and some meat and fish. And by the way, we don't need a lot of food either, but we got to learn to listen to our body's cues. We got to learn to eat from our bellies, not from our brains. First of all, we got to learn to move our attention around. We got this thing called attention. And our attention is typically goes hither and thither. It's, it's pulled here and there, typically by people who want us to do something, usually buy something. Here's a little trick I learned. I was, I was overweight a few years ago. I was, I was like 50 pounds overweight about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I was always the same weight my whole life. I was the same weight. And then gradually, as I got into my 30s, I got a little bigger and then a little bigger and then a little bigger. And first, I thought the scale was broken. I used to weigh myself every day at the gym. And I was like, what's the heck's wrong with this scale? First, I was, started off at 180, and then I was 185, and then I was 190. And then I was demanding that they fix the scale, but they assured me that the scale was fine. And then I was 195, and then I was 200. Before I knew it, I was 220 pounds from, one, from, uh, from 180. I went up to 220 pounds. And so I, was, I had to take emergency measures because I didn't want to be 220 pounds. 
and I didn't want to wear a size 38 pant. That's what, that's what happened to me. I went from a 32 waist to a 34 to a 36, and I was about to go to a 38, and I was like, no way. And so I had to take emergency measures. And what I did was I learned that there's this thing called attention, and most of the time when I was hungry, my attention was in my head, in my mouth, in this little tiny patch of tissue on the top of my tongue and in my mouth. And so I learned that if I put my attention in my belly, most of the time I wasn't hungry. And I lost 50 pounds. I went down to 170. Since uh, I've since gained 10 back, 170 was a little thin. But simply by learning how to move your attention around in your body from your head down to your belly, you could do dramatic things. I guarantee you, for the most part, when we're eating, the vast majority of time, we're not eating from our belly. We're eating from our head. And you can tell you're eating from your head if you're not sure what you want to eat. If you ever stand in front of the, me- uh, looking at the menu or looking at the menu board and you're, ah, I want that, I don't know if I want that, I don't know what I want to eat, you're not hungry. That's how you can tell. Just learn to move your attention around. It's a simple little trick to lose weight. If you don't feel like stopping, if you're busy working or you're having a good time, you don't feel like stopping to eat, everybody's stopping to eat, just move your attention around. And you'll notice that if your attention is in your, if you're eating from your head, or your, the drive to eat is from your head or your mouth, it's simple to resist food. Just drop your attention down to your belly. If you have your attention in your head, just drop it down to your belly where you're not hungry and you're not going to want to eat. When we figure this thing out, that our eating behaviors out, we're going to have, not only are we going to be healthier, not only are we going to be stronger, but we'll have a lot more time and we'll save a lot of money as well. And learning how to eat filling foods is also important. Learning how to take advantage of filling this. This is where veggies come in. Veggies are the quintessential filling food. And they're the quintessential quality food. They're easy to use. They're veggies. You don't have to do anything. You just munch on a, on a stick of celery. They're abundant. They're not, they're not ridiculously cheap, but they're not really that expensive. And they're very, very nutritious. And they're also the perfect ketogenic food. And because they have a negligible effect on insulin, they're the ideal breakfast foods. Foods that stimulate the production of insulin are a bad idea. Insulin makes you tired. Foods that crank up insulin should not be eaten for breakfast. Insulin, uh, one, of the, one of the main effects of insulin is to lower your blood sugar. Hi, hypoglycemia follows insulin, especially if, you're, if your body is super sensitized to insulin, which happens before you go into insulin resistance. The body cranks out lots of insulin. P- the pre-diabetic condition is marked by hypoglycemia, bouts of low blood sugar, bouts of hypoglycemia. That's why many people feel like they need a nap after they eat. If you eat a salad for breakfast, not only are you going to be full, But you're not going to need need a nap uh, at 10 o'clock. Breakfast is the most important meal to skip. That's what we talk about all the time. Skip breakfast. I guarantee you, 100%, you are going to start to hear about how you should be skipping breakfast. Probably in the next couple of years, you're going to start hearing about This is one of the great advantages to you guys listening to The Bright Side. You're getting the scoop two to three to five years before you hear it out there in the mainstream press. But I guarantee you, you're going to start to hear how you want to skip breakfast. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs. If you want to wean yourself off your meds or you have a health challenge you or a loved one is dealing with, we can help you. Certainly if you have a skin health issue or if you have a uh, success story you, you would like to share or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Ripping on food a little bit here. Don't mean to rip on food. So much of our eating behavior is based on trying to get happy. We got a happiness problem. And marketers are only, only too uh, willing to help take care of our happiness issue. We're told that we have to eat to be happy. We have to buy things to be happy. Well, we can just tap into happiness. Imagine it. Try imagine. If you're not happy right now, try imagining it. Just pretending you're happy. As you pretend you're happy, the biochemistry in your brain will change. As you pretend you're happy, you will secrete 
hormones of happiness. And that's the same as being happy. We can pretend our way into being happy. We can pretend our way into being satisfied. We can pretend our way into having a joy for living and a joy for life without buying things, without food, without materialism. The whole, whole notion of consumerism and materialism, it's not in our interest, and we don't even get happy. When they do studies on happiness, they, they find that it's not the material things that make us happy anyway. It's the immaterial things that make us happy. Companionship, friendship, love, socialization, security. These are non-material things. Nobody's ever going to get happier except for maybe for a brief split second from food. But we're induced, we're hypnotized, we're conditioned to believe that that's where happiness is. And of course, we never get happy, so we eat more food and we buy more stuff. It's not in our interest, folks. We're being lied to. We're being hypnotized. We're being manipulated. It's not fair. It really is not fair. Anyway, that's why we're here on the Bright Side every day. I'll clear up some of this confusion. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking about some handy-dandy ways that you can use vegetables and you can use ketogenic foods to access the ketogenic diet. Skipping breakfast is just one of them. Salad for breakfast. I'm sure some of you out there are thinking, oh my God, I'm never going to eat salad for breakfast. Fish for breakfast. You know, you can buy these little, these uh, smoked fish things at the, uh, uh, even your regular supermarket. They're not perfect. They got sugar in there and, you know, probably some chemicals, but at least it's high protein and it's easy to use relatively quality food. What's not quality food is the stuff you get at Denny's, that's for sure, or IHOP. Oh, my God. Cheesecake Factory. That's another one. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see here. Check this one out. Modifying gut bacteria could be a treatment option for PCOS. How do you like that? Where have you heard that before? PCOS is an awful condition that affects a lot of women. 10% of women worldwide are affected by polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you don't have it, you probably don't know what it is, but if you do have it, oh my God. Let's see, PCOS, women who have PCOS will be dealing with obesity issues, they'll be dealing with menstrual issues, they'll be dealing with skin issues, they'll have body hair, they'll have hair on their face, they'll be have thinning hair, it, it have acne, Oh my God, is that an awful condition? Well, guess what? Now, we, now they found that PCOS is related to the gut. Surprise, surprise. If you've been listening to this program for any length of time, folks, you are way ahead of the curve when it comes to understanding how to take care of your body. Even if you're not employing or, or taking advantage of some of the stuff we talk about on this program, you are way ahead of the curve. You, you know more than your physician knows if you've been listening to this program. Not because I'm smart, but just because it's common sense. The triangle of disease, everything, the triangle of disease, no matter what your health challenge is. Here's another good one for you. Research, in, provide, this is all from yesterday, by the way. Research provides insight into the role of the Western diet in Alzheimer's disease. Oh, no kidding. Surprise, surprise. Research, I'm telling you folks, this is from Nature Scientific Reports. Recent research has established associations between the Western diet and Alzheimer's disease. No kidding. If you have Alzheimer's disease or you know anybody who has Alzheimer's disease, please, please, please understand it is reversible. It is not inevitable. There's no drugs that can help you, but we can do it ourselves. Get on a supplement program. Wean yourself off the crappy food, especially sugar. It's type 3 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to Ohio and welcome Liz. Good morning, Liz. What's cooking? Um, hi. I was wondering if you had any advice for me about epilepsy and seizures. Yes. Um, and the, Matthew and seventeen month. twenty-one. Read Matthew. Read the Bible. How did Jesus oh, cure yeah. the boy of epilepsy? He told him to fast. fast? That's, I'm just yes. Ketogenic diet. Well, That's the, the, do you I know about the? Say in the past month, I've um, I've gone on the longevity products and I've gone gluten free, and I'm avoiding all of. Dr. Wallach's 10 bad foods and all of that. Um, but yeah, I guess I was just wondering if you knew anything more Many. specific and what you, you, ex you think I can hope to see from all of it. Zillions, zillions of things you could do for epilepsy, seizure disorders. Have you had any seizures since you've started this new program? Um, not, no grand mal seizures, but I've had, I'm still having the minor one. Okay, here's what you need to do. So you're on the right track, though. You see how you're getting better, right? Now, as far as yeah. the 10 bad foods go, the problem with that list is there's 100 bad foods. No, excuse me. There's 1,000 bad foods. There's not just 10 bad foods. Yeah. So it's misleading. 
And, and yes, I understand the, the point of saying 10 bad foods because we don't want to bombard people with 1,000 bad foods. You've got to start somewhere, but you can't just go by the 10 bad foods. So here's what you need to do. Number one, you've got to go ketogenic. Have you start, just started listening to the program or have you been listening for a while? Today, yeah, today's my first day, but I've okay. listened to you on Coke before. Okay, well, we've been talking about the ketogenic diet now for a couple of weeks. The ketogenic diet, for new listeners out there, and excuse me for repeating for people who've been listening for a while, is a high-fat diet, and it's a low-carbohydrate diet, and I mean very low, and they call it moderate protein. So you're looking at almost no carbohydrates. For, uh, for the, for the, the ketogenic diet can be used for Alzheimer, uh, mental health issues, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, weight loss. But for seizure disorders, it has to be very strict. And that means 5% or so of your calories are coming from carbohydrates, or 10, 5 to 10%, somewhere in there. Very low carb, and those should be vegetables. Also, caloric restriction, restricting the amount of calories that you eat. Also, staying away from any foods that cause digestive distress. Okay, these are the three main strategies right now, and I'm going to give you some nutritional things that you could do. But first and foremost, you want to go very, very low carbohydrate, okay? You want to go calorie restriction as best as you can, and you want to stay away from any kind of problem foods, okay? That's first. The second, and by the way, we have archives at uh, benfuchsarchives.com and also uh, uh, brightsideben.com. And if you listen to the archives from the last couple of weeks, and we'll continue doing this for the next few days, but for the last couple of weeks, we hit the ketogenic diet very hard. And it's extremely important that anybody with seizure disorders understands how to use this thing. It's been used since the 1920s, the ke- uh, ketogenic diet. And by the way, fasting has been used since, not just since Jesus, you know, in the Bible they talk about it, but also Hippocrates talked about it. The ancient Greeks used it for a seizure disorders. Basically, the less food you eat, the more stable your body will be. A seizure disorder is caused by a, a short circuiting in the electrical energy in the brain. That short circuiting is exacerbated by high energy. Sugar is high energy. So you are as quick high energy. So you want to be making sure that you're controlling your foods. Then there's wonderful nutritional supplements. I mean, wonderful for the brain. The B vitamins, extremely important. You're not going to get enough in the Healthy Start Pack. You're going to need to take some extra B vitamins. Can you stick with us, Liz? We got to take a break. I'll get you some more ideas. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Liz in Ohio. Liz, you there? Yes. Okay, so go ketogenic. That means uh, high fat, and the best fat is going to be coconut oil. Do a couple teaspoons of coconut oil, and that will also be very satisfying, a couple teaspoons of coconut oil every day. You may also want to get something called MCT oil, which is in coconut oil, but if you get straight MCT, you can get straight MCT oil at a health food store, maybe a couple tablespoons of that a day. Uh, then you want to make sure you're restricting as best as you can, going 0 to 10% of your calories from carbohydrates and sugar. Certainly refined sugar, that's out. Coke, and uh, you probably know this, but fruit juice. I've and done s- that, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so that's, but there's sneaky places where there's sugar and carbs, and you've got to watch out for those. More fiber can also help you, and the, uh, there's an amino acid called glutamine, G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, which is important for the brain and can also have some beneficial effects for seizure disorders. Then there are the straight, flat-out nutrients for the brain, and chief among those are the B vitamins, all of them. I would be getting an... You'll get some of the BTT. In fact, you'll get a significant amount of the BTT, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. But I personally, if I were you, I'd go get a B-complex, something like a B100, and do it every couple hours. In addition to that, make sure you're getting enough uh, extra omega-3 fatty acids. You'll get those in the ultimate EFAs, but I would be taking a little bit extra. Uh, Fish oil, something like Nordic Naturals or Carlson's, those are good brands of fish oil. And then uh, as far as nutrients flat out, that are flat out, it's just straight for seizures. Lithium orotate is good. GABA, G-A-B-A, which you may have heard of. That's another good one. Make sure you're getting enough magnesium. I would be going uh, using 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Second word, P-I-C-O-L, uh, uh, picol, I-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, picolinate. And then also get yourself 400 international units a day of mixed Mixed tocopherols, that's a form of vitamin E. 
If you have any kind of digestive health issues, in addition to staying away from foods that trigger those, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes. Uh, that's from longevity. Make sure you're using the BioLumin Nightly Essence. I'd be doing 60 billion units of those a day. They can help you process your nutrients. You may also want to try a little bit extra, a, a little extra fat metabolizing nutrients as you're going ketogenic and eating more fat. And the ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. You're going to want to make sure that you're using things like lecithin or bile salts in addition to your ultimate enzymes to make sure you're processing those. Last but most certainly not least, you'll notice that seizure disorders are triggered by shortness of breath. So make sure you're practicing slow, deep breathing. And by deep, I'm talking about into your bottom of your feet, but at least into the, into the belly. Most of us breathe shallow and we don't get enough oxygen and hypoxia or low blood oxygen can certainly be a trigger for a seizure. So slowing down the body, making sure that you're using uh, your deep breath, slow, deep breathing techniques. And then also anything that activates the relaxation nervous system will also be helpful. Things like hot water, hot baths, massage, just, just relaxing, just general relaxing can help us as well. There's so many things you could do, Liz, but it sounds like you're on the right track. Uh, if, you want any, if you want extra information, send me an email, ben at ksco.com and put your phone number in there. Okay, Liz, I got to motivate. I hope we helped you out. Thanks for Thank listening. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Candy in Wisconsin. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on, Candy? Hi, Ben. Um, uh, first of all, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease about three years ago. And they sent me home with two medications, and after I did research about them, I chose not to. One was a steroid, one was a cancer treatment drug. And the doctor was re very upset, and they actually um, told me that I would lose my, intest my small intestine if I didn't follow through with um, doing their drugs. And I refused, and they at least tried to talk me into taking Boost. So I took Boost for three months prescribed. And Boost? I Wait a minute. Boost, like the nutritional drink? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Because oh, the infection was so bad that um, I could only have soft foods, and they felt that I was losing too many minerals and vitamins and um, couldn't hold food down too well. So the infection lasted a good eight months that was still coming out of my body from the, from the acid eating through. Um, but that all cleared up. But how I did it clear up? Wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't just tell us oh. how you did it. <laughs> um, I changed my diet completely. I love it. I was on that boost for three months. But that made me gain 40 pounds, if not okay. a little bit more. But you changed and, your diet and you and you cleared up your problem, right? Yes. I, I started doing um, this Whey Factors from Canada. Yes. And How'd you I know also, about that? How'd you know about uh, natural? That's a great my protein. Dad me, my dad helped me with that one. Good deal. Uh, and, then, and then I did the, um, the meal replacement. Um, I forgot what it was called. It was like I only did it for that whole year by Ruben. Um, oh, Jordan Rubin I, stuff? Yes, Jordan oh, Rubin. Oh, that's awesome. I, You're awesome, so I, Candy. Congratulations. I that as my meals, and then um, slowly I added food back after like three or four months. Um, and then, How are you doing uh, now? How are you doing now? Well, now I started the ketogenic last month due to hearing your message, and I started on the 12th. And it was hell the first few days. Um, <laughs> How come? I, I had I had headaches severely. Um, okay. My body was aching. Did you I try to go all at once? Did you try to do it all at once, or did I you start? Did. It, well, yeah. I mean, I started. I started and I fasted the first day, and then the second day I had the fat and um, lower protein and basically maybe five carbs. Um, and then the third day, and that's when it really let loose was the fourth and fifth day. I felt like a hundred percent. Oh, that's even, awesome. Even my vision felt better. Like, oh, I that's awesome, Candy. That is such good news. Thank you for sharing uh -huh. that. Oh, man. Yeah. So how can and we then, help you? Uh -huh. I'm going to run uh -huh. out of time here. I love hearing the story, though. That's just a great story, Candy. How, okay, how can we help you today? Magnesium oxide. I got the Now product, seeing that it's fairly cheaper and yeah. it's pure powder. Um, I used that the last two nights, and I've been feeling really good. Is it okay to double the dose for one Well, you'll week? have to see. You might get a little diarrhea is the only thing. You might get a little loose stool if you take too much, or you might even get a little drowsy. You'll have to test it out yourself. There's, no, there's not a, a problem necessarily with it. You'll just have to see how you do. It's, it's not the best source of magnesium, though, magnesium oxide. It's a little harder for the body to, to get the magnesium out of the magnesium oxide. But if you're feeling good, 
and stick with it. Um, up, up your dose gradually. Don't double it right away, but up it gradually and see what happens. The, the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll get, go into loose stools or maybe a little drowsiness. And what's the better kind of magnesium? Uh, there's a lot of good kinds. Uh, magnesium glycinate is a good for, uh, source of supplemental magnesium. That's my favorite. Chelated magnesium, colloidal magnesium, which you'll get from, from plant-derived minerals, and then veggies. If you can do veggies, grind up, make veggie juices. Anything that's green is going to be magnesium. Okay, and for the total of weight loss is 15 pounds for one month. Just about you lost here. 15 pounds? Yes, on the 12th that's it'll awesome. be 15 pounds. That's awesome. Congratulate, Candy. You made my day. Thank you so well, much for sharing I that. Thank, I want to thank you because, um, you know, what was stuck in my mind was when you feel horrible, take a bath. I remember you saying that. Take yeah. a hot bath, relax your yeah. body. And yeah. that's what pulled me through that first. Oh, that's you know, so cool, man. You just you just warmed my heart. Thank you so much for sharing that, Candy. I, I, you, you know what, Candy? Send me your email. Uh, email me your address, and I'm going to send you out a free Beyond Tangy Tangerine on me. Email to okay. bennettksco.com. And thank you so and much for sharing that. You made my day. With, to anyone with Crohn's, I have to tell you that um, my last doctor's visit was a month ago. I skipped three years, and she couldn't believe my results. And it says she said that I'm pretty much in remission, can't even tell that I had Crohn's. That, oh, man, that is so, so friggin' cool. Thank you so much, Candy. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. You guys, did you hear that? Anybody out there with Crohn's or celiac or IBS or ulcerative colitis, you don't need a doctor. You just need to change simple little things in the way you eat, the way you supplement. That's just the most, that's a, that just made my day. Thank you so much for that, Candy. All right, let's see if we can get a couple more in here. Brian in Kentucky, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Hey, Ben. Uh, hey. I'm trying to go keto, and yes. uh, I'm having a problem with coconut oil. I'll break out. Terribly. Okay. You sure it's the coconut oil? You, you um, might be linking. Ninety percent. Try. I, it sounds unusual. I'm not going to say no because it's your experience, but you might want to check it out. And the way you check it out is by it's, it's obviously stopping the coconut oil. See what happens. It may take you a couple days for your skin to clear up. Then start Good. again. Okay, don't make any other changes. But sometimes we make associations that aren't there, and coconut oil typically is not going to do that. Now, if it does do it, then you want to make sure that you're processing your fats correctly because that could be a sign that you're not processing your fats and some bad fats are getting into the blood, and that could definitely cause you to break out. But I'm, I wouldn't jump to conclusions just yet until you figure it out, until you figure out if it's indeed the coconut oil that's doing it. Brian, we're just out of time, man. If you want to call back tomorrow, I'll definitely take you up, okay? I apologize, right, bro. thanks. Okay, man. All right. Hey, uh, Carl the Truth Raider, you got, te- you got 15 seconds, Carl the Truth Raider. All right. Thanks, Ben. Hey, uh, I have to say my tip for tomorrow. Uh, what would you recommend as the best uh, meat and dairy place to, to get natural and healthy or organic? Okay. That's uh, a great question. We'll do that tomorrow. All right. Have a beautiful day, Carl. Thanks for, thanks. Thanks for the question. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We got to go. Have yourselves a spectacular, awesome, beautiful day. Check out my skin health products, by the way, at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Have a great, beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. Bye for now.